Hey, how's it going? Ben here. Great to see you again. Thanks for tuning in. Recently, I realized something, and that is that I've been living in Thailand for five years now. Five years ago, I quit my job and moved to Thailand. I still remember the events that led to the decision to leave my home, to kind of run off, if you'd like, and move to a different country on the other side of the world. And I thought now would be a good time to any to reflect on some of those um, feelings I was having and uh, those events that happened and how they uh, conspired and how I ended up out here. So at the time I had graduated with an arts degree. Um, I'd then gone looking for work in the arts um, sort of sector, uh, looking for a job, uh, something to do with painting or printmaking or working in a gallery or anything um, inside the industry of what I studied. However, I kind of really failed at that. I went to a few different open calls, a few different, I did some volunteer work at a few different galleries hoping that they would lead to um, paid work. None of that um, ended up working out for me. So I ended up moving back home to my mum's house, feeling kind of like a failure having failed to have found work in the industry in which I had graduated. This was a real deflating, sort of sad time in my life. Um, I found a job working in a local pub near to my mum's house. So I was pulling pints after studying at university. And in fact, I've been doing that job while studying also. That's why, probably why I found the job because I already had, ex that was the only thing I had experience doing while I was studying. I also worked in bars at nightclubs and different venues. So the degree did feel like a great waste of time, to be honest. Working on a bar was pretty tough work. It wasn't that difficult. You know, it was pretty simple, pretty basic stuff to do. It was quite long hours. It was quite tiring. Uh, but one of the hardest things was actually that the regulars who drank there, they would tease me mercilessly. Being a graduate and then just ending up pulling pints. On reflection, I see that um, it was probably actually pretty beneficial as it was definitely something that, you know, wound me up and drove me to make a big change. I needed to get out of there, I needed to quit. And the sort of uh, jokes and, and the, the mean words that came from some of the regulars probably actually did spur me on quite a lot. Uh, when it came to finding something else. One of the reasons why their words probably hurt so much was because there was some truth to it. There was something uh, that I had like done wrong or I'd misstepped and I needed to correct that. I definitely needed to figure something else out. During this time, I had two great influences, two influences, two people I, I don't know. They're both internet personalities who really inspired me to go out and like try and pursue something. At least something is better than nothing. Uh, and these two people I found at this kind of time period. Uh, the first was Joe Rogan, obviously the massive um, podcaster who's now exclusively on Spotify. He, he talks a lot about finding your own purpose, like working hard and finding um, some value and living a life that like means something to you and that you enjoy. Be the hero of your own movie. If your life was a movie and it started now, Forget about whatever financial disasters you've had, personal failures, relationship failures. What would the hero of your life's movie do right now? Do that. Do those things. The second person was Jordan Peterson, who has a very similar message, in fact, who talks about personal responsibility, working hard, and pursuing a meaningful life. In particular, when it came to Jordan Peterson, I remember one of his um, speeches, um, sort of talking about biblical stories, and I think it was Abraham being uh, called to uh, adventure from God, that really sort of sh struck a nerve with me and made me decide that I had to move, I had to make a change, I had to go and try and seek some kind of adventure in my life or I was gonna end up you know, working in a pub, being bullied by the regulars for the rest of my life and that was something I definitely didn't want. So I needed to figure out what I did want. I didn't really know, but yeah, I started to look for um, opportunities for adventure. And this is something I found so useful about the biblical stories, but especially about the Abrahamic stories, which I didn't know that well till I lectured about them last year. You know, God calls people to the adventure of their lives. And so you could say in part, God is that force within you, which calls you to the adventure of your life. And it says, get away from your family, get away from your blind and unconscious comfort and get the hell out there in the world. So after being influenced by those, uh, you know, intellectual public figures, I realized that what I was missing or what I needed was some kind of adventure. And I didn't have the funds to go on some kind of extended period of travel. So I started to look for opportunities to work in different countries as that way I'd be able to um, earn an income whilst also exploring and whilst also having some kind of adventure in my life. What I found, I found um, teaching opportunities in China, in Vietnam, and in Thailand. Uh, funnily enough, the pub that I was working in, the one that I mentioned, that I had to go and work in after I'd graduated and was unable to find another job in the industry that I would prefer to have. And they also had a Thai restaurant. So as well as pulling pints, I was also waiting on tables in the Thai restaurant, which was the, the other section, the other side of this pub. 
uh, and they actually did have Thai chefs. So uh, yeah, I do think on reflection that they probably did, my relationship with them probably did influence my uh, decision making when I was choosing between uh, the three countries I just mentioned that I could have gone to working. Anyway, I initially set off for Thailand. I bought a one-way plane ticket. I studied for a while. I had to do my TEFL course, and that's a teaching English in a foreign language um, certificate. I had to study a little bit. Um, I had to you know, save up a little bit of money, continue working at the pub, which I really didn't enjoy for, for a short while, just to get some funds behind me, get qualified. Uh, and then, yeah, I bought a one-way ticket to Thailand. Initially, I thought I was going to be here for six months, but here I am five years later, uh, still living in the kingdom of Thailand. My time in Thailand has been filled with ups and downs. On average though, or on the grand scale of things, I would say the ups definitely outweigh the downs and it definitely does feel still uh, like somewhat of an adventure being out here, being away from home. Whilst I moved away from everyone and everything that I kind of knew, it really did put me in a good position to really like develop some clear thoughts on my life and has really helped me decide on uh, some positive decisions or directions to take. I started going to a gym once I moved to Thailand and taking fitness seriously. I try and do a you know regular workout routines. I've continued to navigate a pretty challenging job. I never saw myself being able to you know be a teacher and I've done that for you know three or four years and I continue to do that but I've surprised even myself and many of my family members by being capable enough to navigate uh, being a teacher here in Thailand it's not a easy challenge uh, to give yourself but it's something that I seem to have been able to cope with for now potentially most significantly I also started this YouTube channel something that I'm very proud of but also something that I would have been very embarrassed to do if I, I think if I'd stayed at home I think there's a good chance I wouldn't have started this you know being given that space away from everyone and cutting a lot of ties I felt some sort of liberation to really try something new. I'm not really as intimidated as I was in the past. I guess I've become somewhat braver. I'm also less kind of embarrassed of my goals and what I want and what I want to do. So that's all something that seems to have been like kind of improved uh, by going on uh, this sort of adventure, we'll call it. The reason why I wanted to make this video was twofold. Um, first was to just reflect uh, on my time here in Thailand, um, this five year milestone. And the second was to encourage anyone listening to this video who may be um, feeling in a bit of a rut, who may be feeling like they're going through kind of a stale time in life at the moment, uh, is to encourage you or to like, like say to you that you need to find your adventure. You need to find something that seems adventurous, that's exciting to you and pursue that. Everyone is going to have like a different sort of ambition. Everyone is gonna have different interests. Everyone is gonna have a different adventure they want to embark on. But it's worth bearing in mind that if you are a native English speaker, you can you know, become a uh, qualified TEFL teacher and go pretty much anywhere in the world and find work doing that. So that's always an option for you, if nothing else. It was an option for me and that's what I did. Maybe travel isn't for you. Maybe opening a business is more your speed. Maybe it's starting a YouTube channel. Maybe it's opening like a cafe. Uh, writing a book, painting a painting, whatever it might be, whatever it is you would like secretly really desire, um, but maybe you're a little bit ashamed, or maybe you don't feel yourself capable of achieving those sort of desires. My message would be just get on with it, just make that jump, try and start, try and do it, you know, make some sort of plan and make some small steps towards that goal. Once you've outlined and decided on a goal um, and it's based in reality, it's something that could be achieved then that means you could start work towards that. One thing I realized once starting um, this YouTube channel, you know, I have been aspirations. I used to watch many, many different YouTube channels. I used to dream that one day I would have a successful YouTube channel uh, and I'm not there yet, potentially on the way, who knows? But, and what I realized is you can have those dreams. You could have a dream of be being a YouTube star. You could have a dream of being a successful novelist and writing many books. And maybe those dreams won't come to fruition. But one thing that can come to fruition is that you can at least try. Maybe you'll never be as big as Joe Rogan, but you could have a small or medium sized YouTube channel and maybe that's enough for you. Maybe you'll never be uh, JK Rowling, but you could write and complete a book, sell it on Amazon. That's within the range of your capability. It's definitely achievable. I'm not saying you could go on to be the most successful writer, the most influential blogger or vlogger. But you could definitely do it. You could definitely start now and hopefully you have some of the basics. Um, you know, hopefully you can write, hopefully you have access to a computer and a camera maybe. But if you have those very basic things, if you have a smartphone, then you really could begin. You could begin working towards something that may not be groundbreaking, may not be earth shattering, but perhaps could be enough for you. It could be enough of an adventure. You could get enough sense of accomplishment from doing those things 
if you set out, if you make a plan, if you start today, that could cure your boredom, that could give you meaning, that could be the adventure that you seek. If teaching English in a foreign country is something that you would be interested in, I have previously made a video about the documents and qualifications needed to do that, so I'll leave a link to it there. Um, so yeah, if that's something you're interested in, then please check out that video. 